This is a Stock Trend Reality Podcast, episode 206. I had to back myself off a little bit because all I would think about going to sleep, waking up was trading and charts and I was like, okay, I need to, and I'm going to burn myself out. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host, attention all parents. Did he do the right thing with his daughter, Joy? Play Trader. Yeah, and I'm, uh, I'm all for it. As far as you listeners out there, if you have kids, I do not proclaim to have a vast, full, perfect, flawless understanding of this whole thing we call parenting. But um, so if, if there is something else or another way you could have uh, thought we could have approached this, then please let me know. But the context is this, and then I'll get into the problem, what I thought might have been a solution, and then what we ended up doing. And like I said, I'm not saying this is right or wrong, but let me know. So at our church, every now and then the, the kids will go up front and, and sing, sing some sort of song. So nothing, nothing revolutionary there. So the morning that it's time for our, our kids, uh, Joy, our oldest, who is six, to go up front, you know, we got and got to practice with her because she, she, unfortunately, she inherited my genes of shyness and did not get my wife's outgoing bubbly attitude genes. So yeah, she's shy. She, oh, great. I don't want to go up front. And uh, so, but we were working with her. Okay, let's just practice going up front and everything was going well. And then, it, okay, and you know what? I, why everybody greets one another if the kids will go up front? So she starts to kind of freak out, and I, I got to put on my stern face, Joy, go, you know, just get up there. So she went up there, and she walked up the steps. So of course she walked up the steps like any normal person would. The problem was she never turned around. So the whole time as oh, everybody man. was singing, there is Joy facing the opposite direction, and she never turned around. So that brought up the, the, now, of course, everybody thought it was pretty funny, but then it brings up me. It's like, okay, what's the, the problem here is obviously she didn't turn around. And I, I realized there's one way you can look at, hey, we're making steps. At least we got her to go up front. But then I'm thinking, well, that's the equivalent though of saying, well, at least the person showed up for work, but then they didn't do anything. They clocked in, but didn't do anything. But I'm like, but is that too hardcore? Like, She's six. Should I really be looking at this as some sort of business where an employee shows up and, well, yeah, do they get credit for just showing up? No, they have to actually do what they're supposed to do. And she didn't do what she was supposed to do. She didn't turn around. But I'm like, I don't know. She's six. So eventually my wife and I, upon um, talking with some other people, they were like, you know, she's six. I, I would look at it as, hey, you got her to at least go up. Now, next time you can work on just getting her to turn around. So that's the route we went. She didn't necessarily get into trouble or anything. We just encouraged her and said, hey, Good job for going up there, but next time let's let, let's practice turning around. Um, and Chaz, how do you? I mean, I know that you don't necessarily have any. Uh, you have nephews and nieces, if if I remember right. Yep. So I mean, not that I'm. Does that seem like an, at least a rational approach to solving the, the issue? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, I totally understand your work analogy, but at six years old, that's probably her <laughs> conquering something very, very of, of a big deal to her. So I would say step by step is probably the way to do it. And um, hey, you know, she's got nothing to worry about walking up there. You, you you already walked up there. That's not that's not hard at all. So next time we'll work on turning around. I, I like that logic. I personally probably approach it that way, too. Yeah, good. I'm glad that we're kind of on the same page here. And um, to offer a little more context, the next time they had to go up to, to sing, she actually did turn around. She didn't necessarily sing, but we're, we're, we're making baby steps. So that's uh, progress. Yeah, that's progress. And we're, we're moving in the right direction. But today we have another great episode or tonight or whenever you listen to this, we are uh, talking with Chez's neighbor. And I mean that in every literal sense of the definition. And as Chaz and I were discussing before we got recording, the world truly becomes smaller and smaller as we do this podcast and just the community grows. Um, and it's gotten very small from Chaz's angle. Um, and we're talking with Justin and he goes, uh, we'll establish his name as we go into the, the interview here. Uh, but it was a great time, a great interview. He's at a stage where I think a lot of people uh, can relate to. He's gone through a lot of stuff, quote unquote, in terms of other gurus, other services, other courses. So he's definitely one of these people that that's been through a lot in the sense of 
He, it's not like he's sitting here talking from a very limited reference point. He, he's got himself a pretty big reference point in, in the sense of kind of navigating the, the, the shark infested waters we call uh, the, the markets here. Uh, so without further ado, let's hear about Justin and his journey. Justin, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, guys. I'm happy to be on. And before I forget, thank you for volunteering to be here. I sent out an email and you were one of the people that replied. And so I thank you very much for that. It makes Ches and I's job a whole lot easier and it just keeps this whole show going. So I, I do appreciate you um, coming to us rather than Ches and I having to put on our, our camouflage gear and having to track people down and stalk them. So I, I, I do I, I thank you for making my life easier. That's pretty much the best way to put it. Now, I'll be totally honest. Uh, I feel like I know the name, but I don't know if I know the name. And for viewers, this is kind of the goal here. We want to make it look like you're just a fly in the wall of a, of a coffee shop conversation. So, I mean, are you in the chat room? I am in the chat room. And what is your uh, alias then? Chunky Monkey. Oh, you're Chunky Monkey. Okay, that does ring a bell. <laughs> and you're from uh, Colorado. Or, yeah, you're in Colorado, right? I'm like 20 minutes from Chaz. From Chaz, yeah, Steamboat, yeah. right? Okay, I, I totally on Thursday, Justin. So uh, I'll let you know before then. Awesome. Yeah, I'm hoping to get out and do some canyon laps. So I, I don't know what that is, but okay, this is cool. All <laughs> right, I like I said, I thought I remember the name, Justin, but I okay, yes, Chunky Monkey, and you just signed up like what, like a month ago, maybe? Uh, I think it was the beginning of December. I was sitting on it for a while, and I was like, maybe I'll just join IC. And I was doing some other um, courses and I wanted to get the one. I just was so unorganized. I couldn't even stick with it. And I took another course and it was really good intro wise. So like through um, robotic trading and skill sharpening, um, you went way more in depth, but I was familiar with 99% of um, what that was. And I'd practiced some of it. So that was helpful. But it was so surface level that I was like, okay, I still don't know how to <laughs> actually uh, apply most of this. Uh, so then uh, once I finished that course, then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to dive in. I love the, sh the structure. I love the podcast and like the free videos and how you um, communicate, how you teach your analogies and just how real even this podcast was, which is how I found you to begin with. And now, would you agree it was real? None of this is staged, right? I didn't ask you anything before we got started. Maybe I even came across as a bit of a jerk when I just hopped into stuff. But well, you'll admit, this is nothing is staged here, right? We just hopped right in, and I genuinely had no idea who you were. Is that all no, true? Absolutely. The only okay. uh, We exchanged, I think, one email, and I had volunteered to be on the podcast before joining uh, CTU or IC at all. And you're like, well, we only do it for people. So if you join, get through a couple courses hit us up and then you guys reached out asking someone to come on. So that was the only interaction you and I had. And Ches and I talked about Steamboat once in the chat room and that was it. Okay, cool. And I mean, I do remember you volunteering, but you along with, I don't know, I think we have like seven or eight now on the book. So I, I don't, but thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed the genuineness <laughs> of the podcast because as you just experienced, it really is genuine. And Ches, I kind of wonder if we come across as jerks because people hop on and then I just go through my spiel. I don't even really ask them how they're doing or anything because I wanted to. Have you ever thought about that, Ches? Do you think we maybe set the tone a little a little bleak when we first get started? I mean, maybe I kind of do the same thing where I'm like, OK, your microphone works, your headphones are on and let me get Clay in here. And then I kind of sit <laughs> silently. So, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'm not the most polite host either. But uh, we do have, we do do it for a reason. I hope everybody understands. Yeah, that, ex we want exactly. To keep genuine. Yep. All right. Cool. Well, um, so we just established you joined back in about an, uh, beginning of December. So looking at the calendar, you've been around about three months now. Uh, but I guess we'll we'll go even further back than that. And I'm curious to maybe hear about these other courses and stuff. But what actually got you interested in the market? When did you first hear about it? And you know, going back to the interest part, what got you interested enough to actually want to kind of start in and get more hands on with it? Uh, so when I was as early as I can remember, my mom's dad. He was an investor in, in the market. I mean, he had businesses and every, a business his whole life. But once he retired, uh, he put a lot of money in the stock market. But, um, you know, big company, the Home Depot, Tandy, uh, which I believe was Radio Shack, um, uh, maybe uh, energy companies or like communications companies. I think uh, what was a big one. What was Bell South or was Bell South something before? Anyway, so he was always every day after school, he'd pick me up. We'd go home usually play in the yard and then we would sit in front of uh 
CNBC or something. I always had the tickers running across the bottom of the screen and he'd look in the newspaper and show me this is up, this is down. But I was, you know, between five and 10 years old. Um, then just like a lot of people on the show, when I was in high school, one of our teachers had us do that competition. I think we did it in groups. I don't know if our team won, but we definitely were near the top. We did pretty well. Um, looking back, I don't know how we made decisions on those because all we did was look at newspapers with up arrows and down arrows over the course of like two weeks. But um, then as I got older, uh, I had a mentor who um, traded actively. He did mostly swing trades. He had a couple like dividend paying long term positions, but mostly positions over a couple days to a couple weeks every once in a while um we he would uh day trade in the morning and then we work in the afternoon kind of get deal and that kind of triggered my interest more because we'd go into his office he could write me a paycheck and he'd have all these charts up on his monitors oh man what's that and so he would like show me support resistance and fibs and you know stuff like that but it was so over my head at that point. Okay, so, so before you even go even further about this mentor, where exactly did you find him? Was he always related to finance or was he more of a larger scale, big picture type mentor? Or was he like just finance was here to help you with finance strictly? Oh, totally not finance related. So my background is uh, when I was 13, I started an apprenticeship as a farrier, which if you're not in the horse industry, it's a horseshoer, blacksmith, um, that trade. So I did that. I started my apprenticeship when I was 13. And then I started working for him as a mentor and boss in that field um, uh, when I was, I guess, 18 or 19. Um, I worked for him for a couple of years then. Then I did something else for a while. Then I went back and worked for him again. So, so it was you're a totally a, wait, different You're a blacksmith? Field. I'm a blacksmith by trade. Chez, I swear. Now we've talked to a blacksmith. <laughs> Who haven't we talked to, Chez? <laughs> now, you know what? Honestly, in my mind right now, honestly, in my mind right now, I have the Game of Thrones theme song playing and I can see Chunky (laughs) Monkey sitting there just pounding out a sword with like sparks flying everywhere. (laughs) Is that anything close to what you did or am I just like, have I been Hollywoodized? Um, I wasn't a bladesmith, um, but I did make horseshoes and trim horses feet, kind of like you trim your nails, but a little more involved. And um made shoes that fit them and put the shoes on as a very layman's basic uh, explanation. So uh, blacksmith is is kind of like engineering. Okay, yeah, you're in engineering, but then within engineering, the umbrella, there's all sorts of types of engineering. So it sounds like blacksmith is the um- umbrella, but then you could be a bladesmith or you could be what you did. Is that kind of a fair description of the, the blacksmith market? Sure, it would probably go metal worker as the overarching because you could be a welder you could work with sheet metal all that and then blacksmith as a subcategory and then farrier as a more as a very specific subcategory of all of that yeah okay that's cool all right i i was never really you learn the weirdest things on this and i I love it okay (laughs) back to your story this so this was the guy that your blacksmith boss was Mm -hmm. the guy with all the charts and stuff on his office when you would go in in or okay Yeah, cool. he was a super smart guy. I mean, he he traded back when you had to have like a brick phone with a a, a battery, <laughs> awesome. and he'd call his broker. Um, yeah, but kinda, was this before or after he called an air support? Like I'm picturing like Vietnam type <laughs> phone where he's just <laughs> calling in the napalm. Probably and then, something. Yeah, <laughs> probably something like that. And uh, I guess you kind of already said you didn't quite know what he was talking about when he was explaining support, resistance, fibs, and everything. But just for what year was this or ish? Uh, 2000, it started, I first started working for him in like 2008. And then I went back to work for him for a couple of years between like, I don't know, 2010 and 2012. Okay. So that's kind of where we're at in the timeline. I, I was just curious exactly where we we're at. Uh, via okay so you you what was between because you said you worked for him and then you went back what what occurred between the, that those periods uh i took some time away from the trade and what did i do i think for a little while i went to work at my dad's law office i was like 19 i think at the time um went back worked for him for a while then i took six weeks and went and stayed with a friend in san diego who i helped um, renovate. I'm from Florida originally, so I went across the country, 
worked for six weeks helping my buddy renovate his house. Then when I came back, I worked for Starbucks. Then I tried going back to college. Um, school, I love learning things, but uh, school was never my um, favorite thing at all. Um, and then when I came to Starbucks school, and then I was, uh, my this college I had gone to was, this is kind of a tangent, but was um, very structured, like your first year. So they scheduled your classes really early to later in the evening and then with homework and all that there was there was hardly not a lot of time to to work uh, a job so I kind of worked part-time for a ch- my church at the time um but I was really getting frustrated going from being really independent to now like my parents had to help me at least with some things and I was like man I just want to kind of make I want to make some money like this school thing why am I I, I hate this why did I try going back to this I was like, what can I do to make money? I was like, oh, yeah, I always made good money um, shoeing horses. So that's what brought me then back again in like 2010, 2011. And then I worked for him for, I don't know, a year and a half, two years, the second round. And then I started my own business in the beginning of 2011, which was sort of part time as it got growing and working for him part time. And then I transitioned to full time. Well, I'm glad I asked because that was quite the little journey that uh, you just conveniently <laughs> were trying to skip over, I guess, on us. I, what I took away from that is you're not afraid to get your hands dirty. You're willing to just do what needs to be done to, to, to put some cash in your pocket. And I totally understand about the school thing, I guess, because when I was in school, I kind of felt the same way. Like, I mean, I get it. This is a means to an end. But all these classes and all this you know, projects and stuff and you have to work. I mean, why can't I just go and try to do something else uh, more practical as in, you know, create some, you know, spend some time making money. But so I, I, I totally understand that feeling there. Um, but now for you kids out there, no excuses. Don't blame Ches and I where we're not telling you to drop out of school or anything. If anything, blame Chunky Monkey. It's his fault. Uh, no, I was just going to say, don't blame Chunky Monkey either. You know, actually, please <laughs> blame Chunky Monkey because when you go to your parents and be like, it's Chunky Monkey's fault, they're probably going to say, you're getting a drug test right now because yeah, yeah, I was just about to say, pee yeah. in this cup because we yeah. need to know who this Chunky Monkey magical yeah. fellow is that you keep talking about. Yeah, exactly. So kids, please do go and say it's Chunky Monkey's fault. Um, right, Chaz, that's we're an probably, easier scapegoat. That's yeah, cool. exactly. Okay, we're gonna, yeah, pee in this cup. That's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> Uh, I, I guess I'll let you pick it back up where, in terms of your journey. I realize I totally derailed things, but um, I think you said that you had went back. Uh, and but I'll just I'll toss it back to you. Uh, where sure. where do you want to pick this back up? Where do you think would be uh, most logical? So yeah, so I guess following that, so I was working for him fine. Like he would show me every once in a while, like pull up a chart. Whether sometimes it'd be on his phone during the day, but he would usually just use that to monitor his positions. He already had set up with stops, and you know he. He um he was very disciplined with his rules and he would he was honest to he would admit he'd be like yeah I broke my rules and I lost more money than I should have or I got lucky but I broke my rules so I have to you know discipline myself um he he's a really 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 smart guy. I learned so much from him about life about my uh, sh- uh, horseshoeing career um and I could have learned a lot from him about sure we still talk a little bit but now he's in Florida I'm in Colorado. So we don't talk too often, but I could have learned a lot more from him about trading years and years ago had I um, been in the mental frame to absorb it. But anyway, so going from there, um, I had a friend that we used to hang out a couple times a week, and he had he was working for the family business, and he wanted to invest some money, so he opened, I believe, a Scott Trade account, and um, he was more of a fundamental guys like I just like this company you know it's a big company that we deal with in our business and so I'm going to buy some shares in them and stuff and I was trying to take what I had learned from my mentor and be like oh look at this chart you know I didn't know what I was doing really but I knew enough to know that there was some sort of technical analysis to be understood so I opened a um think or swim account and just did some um kind of did some paper trading but I was always scared I'm very risk adverse, even with paper trading, I take it very personally, probably the more being wrong part. Um, but I don't like, I'm still, I'll put in a paper trade every once in a while. I'll, if anything, I'll write it down, but I don't want like those numbers (laughs) 
on the platform to be affected and make me uh well impact wanna, your decision making that but i don't want to um a build bad habits but i don't want to get a false picture of my potential as a trader if i'm if those stats are being taken before i'm really equipped like i don't i haven't been through rvr yet so really my trading i i'm not in a place that i could even build a trading plan so what i normally do is um I go through like the newsletter. I'll go through some of the call outs. Um, I'll run some scanners just to try to, you know, get a feel for things. And I'll set, I set a ton of alerts. I mean, my email inbox is full of alerts that have been triggered, but I, I set alerts and I like put either a text note on the chart or a note in the trigger itself as to what I'm intending to accomplish by setting this trigger. Like um, if it dips below here, this is where I see the bottom of this pattern and where I'd have the lowest risk to my on the downside to my potential reward upside if the patterns and candles and indicators look like it's going to go back up. But this is where I'd want to look at it. Right now it's in the middle of nowhere. I wouldn't want to touch it for a swing trade. With my limited experience, I'm not trying to say that that's a, a viable trade plan, but I'm just trying to like get myself familiar with what things are doing. I set a lot of alerts, a lot of notes. Um, and I kind of track like how I'm my understanding and my educational process is going with, I guess, sort of applying it to the real world, if that makes any sort of sense. No, absolutely. And that's, uh, I, I'm the, I learn the same way in terms of I go through the course, learn what I need to learn, take the notes on it, but then I need to apply it to something, even if it is paper, uh, just to kind of help solidify the ideas. So you're, you're going about it just about the same way I did too. So um, I want to give you kudos uh, also for the fact that you realize that, you know, I haven't taken RVR yet. I don't technically know how to make a trade plan, but you have enough information where uh, you have you you know how to you're starting to learn how to read a chart. You're not say you know fully setting up RVR trades by any means, but you're capable and understand candlesticks and patterns and things like that. So kudos to you first off for not just kind of throwing your count in wildly after going through one course. So Clay and I run into a lot of people who are yeah I'm a university student and I've gone through one course and I'm putting my fifty thousand dollar account on the line already without kind of finishing <laughs> the courses. So kudos for you for not doing that. So. I, I want to add, if you don't mind, I want to add to that, that um, it's very, it's encouraging to me too, because sometimes I feel very overwhelmed by like, I didn't finish college. Like I'm a great student. I got all A's in school very easily without really applying myself, but it's still like, I almost feel very intimidated by um, the market. So it's very encouraging for me to like set those notes, set those alerts. And then I usually don't check the alerts once they've gone off. I usually wait at least 24 hours to see what the longer term play out of that alert trigger for me. Like say that alert was a, a buy order or a short sell order. Um, if I waited a day or two without looking at it at all to freak out, what would have happened? And it's really encouraging to a lot of times. I mean, there's plenty of times that I'm wrong too. I'm like, okay, I would have had, you know, cut my losses quick on that. But there's a lot of times where I'm like, man, I would have had 5%, sometimes 25, 30% over a week or less. You, if it's over a week, I, I currently my mindset is I wouldn't want to hold over a weekend, but that could change. But it's encouraging to me to be like, oh, okay, I am, I am kind of learning something. I know there's more to it with fills and I could get stopped out early, but as a general consensus, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm not totally uh, lost. Like I am actually learning something and, um, using some sort of uh, educated guesses behind this. So it, it keeps me motivated to keep learning and see how those odds uh, constantly improve, I guess. That, that does make sense. Now I want to, that's what you're doing currently right now. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So I guess I kind of want to loop back to complete the journey here until, and fill in yeah, some, yeah. fill in some spaces here. So that, no, that was definitely a good rabbit hole. And I, I thought that was uh to echo Chez, well done on not just taking a couple courses and saying, okay, I'm ready to go because that's clearly not what, you know, I say in the courses or anything like that. So thank you for listening. Sure. Um, but yeah. I guess where, where did, like I said, let, let's fill in some more time gaps here. So, I mean, you, okay. Um, I, do you remember where you left off before we kind of drag down this? But I guess 
Because yeah, obviously, okay, because I know you said you had taken some other courses and, and stuff like that, but I, I know I always like to hear kind of, uh, you know, the back the, the background of where people get to, and we'll definitely mm-hmm. come back and chat more about this topic too, but I guess I'll let you pick it back up and we'll keep plugging in some time gaps here so we can get your complete journey. Cool. Yeah, so it, um, uh, I went, it was, trading was always in the back of my mind, but like building a business and, um, going on, you know, I, I would go on like a lot of trips and stuff like it's not an excuse. It just wasn't at the forefront of my mind. Like I still wasn't quite ready to absorb that. If that doesn't, my, my mind just wasn't in that frame, but it was always back there. Like, man, I'd really like that flexibility to, um, just have my money working for me a little bit. Um, and putting away, you know, investing for myself. I like, I'm definitely a do it yourself kind of person. Like I tune and wax my own skis. I used to reload my own ammunition when I was uh, shooting, um, competitively, uh, whatever the heck it is for like, I, when I go elk hunting, I have never hired a guide. I just go figure it out. Like everything I do, I pretty much want to be able to do be self, um, reliant. And so when it came to money, I was like, I, I'd really like to be able to do that on my own. And if I could do it full time, it'd be really nice to um, pick up and go live in another country, rent an apartment for a couple months and just make some money uh, trading. That's kind of the long, that's not necessarily what I feel like I need to do. I like having a business um, and working also, but it'd be kind of cool. I feel like it'd be nice to have that option someday if I, this would be a good tool to have my belt that... Um, could at least contribute towards doing that if it's not necessarily the only stream of income. So anyway, so fast forward a few years, I guess it's in the back of my head. And I don't remember what got me interested again, but I saw a, I think, YouTube ad for someone named Tim Sykes. And I guess if you have to take that out, you can. Um, And he was really inspiring and motivational. And you're like, but a little bit Part of it was like, this looks a little too good to be true, but I was still biting the hook. I'm not going to say I totally had red alert. This seems crazy. Um, but I did think that spending eight to $10,000 without some sort of um, not guarantee, but like, okay, if your alerts are so valuable that we're going to, you know, people are making $5,000 a day from these alerts. Why don't you give out one free alert? And... um or something like that. And that'll pay for the course. Like if you make me five grand in one day, I will pay you $10,000 to teach me how to do that, you know, every day. But I was like, this seems sketchy. So I kind of, I got like, I have a question though. Videos. What? Yeah. Yeah. Eight to 10,000. Is that, what is eight to 10,000? Like some sort of course he, or what, what? I think that's for his course and you get into like the chat room or, or live <laughs> feed it's been a few years since i saw the actual offer but um, it, but you're you but are it was confident it was, like that. it was thousands upon thousands of dollars oh easily and that's yeah, not the is. only one that grabbed my attention yeah oh. uh Chad, <laughs> we really need to raise prices apparently <laughs> good grief sorry to cut you well, off without, without without naming no, another no. competitor they have a lambo package clay they have a kia package <laughs> the, there's packages named after cars and i was just like oh goodness clay will have a field day are you are you, are you yeah, serious right now are you trolling me I'm dead serious. Oh I'll send you the link when I find no, it. I don't want, no, don't send it to me. Honestly, I don't <laughs> want to see it because you're right. That'll just grind my gears and I don't feel like having my gears grinded right now. So, uh, all right. Sorry to cut you off there. And uh, no. Um, okay. Oh, we really got to so raise prices. Going right. from there, <laughs> so going from there, uh, there was, then I'm just going to say names. If you have to bleep them out, just bleep them out. Is that cool? Yeah, that works. Okay, yeah, sure. So there's another guy named um, Jerry Robinson. He runs a site cut. I think it's called followthemoney.com. Um, and uh, he seemed really realistic and honest. He seemed a little, I know he does offer day and swing trade stuff, but I think a lot of his stuff is geared towards long-term investing. But I watched him for a while. He seemed to have pretty reasonable prices, but what kind of ticked me, uh, not ticked me off a little bit, but he, he offers this like platform called like the profit tracker or something. And basically it, you can pull up any ticker and it has his favorite three indicators preloaded, but unnamed as to what they are. And I, I do, I did figure out, um, by a lot of re- like, uh, what's the word reverse engineering or something. Like I basically figured out what those three indicators were. And I was like, 
I'm paying this service for him to just have three preloaded indicators uh, that he calls like the tripwire, the trigger, and the confirmation or something. Um, which I, it was kind of a neat, I guess, process to just put in my head like, oh, okay, that's kind of a neat way to do it. But I was like, I don't know if I want to pay to just, I can just figure out what the indicators are and put that on my own platform. Um, but his he has an interesting podcast. He has some cool conversations and stuff too. Uh, but I didn't join him. Then I found this other site. Um, I don't know. It just seemed like a little bit too uh, shiny object, you know, good to be true kind of thing. But I did. I just didn't pay much, much attention. And there, so there were a couple others. And then a guy named caught my attention, and I was like, "Oh, three simple patterns. I'm going to watch your webinar." Uh, and, uh, so I watched him for a while and he's like, oh, I was a, I'm a retired school teacher. Uh, I started trading, got myself out of debt, blah, blah, blah. And I haven't figured he, his alerts are pretty transparent because he will say I took a huge loss, uh, made a huge gain. This is how much I lost. Like, he's very transparent about his losses and it looks from the emails and like the alerts he emails out. It looks like, um, He's only trick, but there's like a because of the timestamps and everything. You're kind of like, is he front running? Is he not? And I just can't. I couldn't tell. But anyway, I did join. We'll block his, out like, that name. Yes, there's okay. The, the background cool. there is so sketchy. It's just trust me. Just yeah, you, good instincts. I'll yeah. just leave it at that. There's a whole <laughs> lot of sketchiness with all that. So. Um, we'll we'll make sure to blur it black that out because I don't need I don't need any drama. No. So uh, yes. no, for sure. But, uh, I'll, like for I said, sure. good good gut instincts. Yeah, so I, I did join the quarterly subscription to that one, um, and uh, but his and some of his video I watched a lot of the the in the like course videos he has. There's no structure. It's just kind of like willy nilly. Go here, go there, go, and. A lot of it wasn't very in depth, like his L2 video. I was like, what? I don't, that, that wasn't helpful. I could have watched a free YouTube video that was more, um, I understood more previously about L2s from free videos on YouTube than, um, what his paid, anyway. So I still get some of his, like, the alerts, but I basically just delete them. I don't even, um, pay attention to those. And then there's a funny story. Since watched, the name is blocked out, yeah. Uh, there is sure. another site out there, Profit Lee. I don't even know if it's around, but it, it, it's mm -hmm. you can supposedly show show your trade and track and blah blah blah. But anyways, yeah. this person got busted because they, I forget how it went. It was something like they were showing trades, but then there was a way to manipulate the system, which is why that site's kind of a joke in the first place. But anyways, they, they a glorified spreadsheet that you could modify. Yeah, it was, it was a joke. But this person uh, like blew up their account, tried to hide the fact. But then him and the owner of the site kind of went at it because they were it's just it, it got messy. But a lot of a lot of things got exposed. And it's just like it, it's no wonder why, Clay. I mean, and talking to myself, you can't be you can't be offended when people accuse you of being or when people are skeptical of you, because I get it. There's so much shady stuff that goes on out there. And, uh, but yeah, this person definitely has a great marketing department. I'll, I'll give them, I'll give them props there, but yeah, uh, there is a whole lot of shade, shadiness, sketchiness, whatever you oh, want to sure. call it. But, uh, yeah, that's one thing I remember is he's blown <laughs> up his account multiple times, tried to hit it, got right. busted. I guess that just shows the power of a good PR department because he's uh, apparently sure. been able to bounce back from it and people aren't even aware of it. But, um, yeah, it's, uh. It's a it's it's a dangerous world out there. Mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just leave it at that. So um, please, listeners, be skeptical of this show. Be skeptical of me because I understand. You know, go and check stuff out because there is a lot of games. But anyways, keep on going. But this is a uh, good stuff. Hopefully, some people can learn from it. And sorry, P don't don't message Ches and I. Be like, well, can you tell us who the name is? No, I don't want the drama. No. Okay, I'll just <laughs> leave it at that. So uh, if I'm not mistaken, that. Um Profitly website is owned by someone I previously named. That is correct. Yep. Correct yep. yep. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. Um, okay, where do I go? So then I had also had my eye on um, someone that is talked about, has been talked about a lot previously, that has a very expensive uh, 
limited access to educational material. Yeah, don't plan. I know who you're, don't name him because that we'll make we'll I'm make okay, say we'll it. make IT nope. Nate's job a little better. You, but uh, yes, he yeah. has been talked about yeah, multiple I, times, and <laughs> I know for sure because yeah. I've seen the cease and desist orders that he sends other people. Um, when they speak the truth about his services and I don't feel like dealing with that drama. So again, thank you for, uh, not mentioning him. Yep. No, not going to say that name. And then, um, the other course I did name is a, a young kid. Um, seems really seems honest, seems straightforward. It's a, it's a very cheap package, lifetime access. The chat room is full of hooligans. I think I had messaged you about, actually I had, you and I had uh, chatted on the website. Um, chat box about this uh and like i said i learned a lot of basic surface level stuff from him um seems like an honest transparent does seem like he genuinely wants to help um but you can get into some of his chats without um subscribing or paying anything so there's these people uh, constantly posting i just put my life savings in this account should i buy or sell this ticker or this ticker and And there's a lot of like hopes and prayers like, oh, please, 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 please. And I was like, this this is a lot of uh, dart throwing going on here. I don't think I want to pay attention. Uh, I mean, you you can call it dart throwing. I'm going to call it degenerate gambling is what uh, the more accurate term is, because that's (laughs) that's exactly what it is. And it's a very sad state when and but and and for listeners, it may sound like, uh, you know, Justin, he's not exaggerating. Justin, there's people. Like I said, you if you get in this world long enough and you, and you venture into social media or message boards and stuff like that, or some of those chat rooms that he's referring to, you will start quickly start to see that people have gambling problems out there, and it's uh it's it can be a nasty nasty situation. Um, so he is not exaggerating at all. So carry on. This is good stuff. <laughs> so um, now, mind you, and I know that this, I'm I'm sure this. Uh, this has happened on previous podcasts I've heard where uh, people go and do something and you're like, just for reference, did I instruct you to do that anywhere in my course? And they'll say no, and whatever. But that happens all the time in this, uh, this other group as well. Like after watching all of his course videos, there's people in this group doing everything he says not to do. So it's no fault of his and it's no fault of yours when people decide to try their own, you know, learn by their own mistakes. Um, does he does some, he run the I'm, chat room with an iron hammer or no? Uh, no. And well, it's, then it's I, not, I would I would say it yeah. is. I would say he is his. Uh, like I said, if he if he's trying to be buddy buddy with everybody, that's good. But that also has the consequences of a, a culture that sounds like it's one where degenerate gambling is totally fine. Whereas I know, you know, if you were to come into the inner circle and start to act like a degenerate gambler, you will you will still be welcomed, but you will just get called out. And you will either have a to lot. A, yeah. not be offended and realize that we're trying to help you, or B, you will be offended. You'll think we're all jerks and you'll probably leave and never come back again. But that's definitely where I, I understand what you're saying. But as an instructor, there is still something that we can try to do to in, in, enforce as much as possible to listen. But if you're just letting that sort of culture and community unfold, uh, I, I, I still kind of I still kind of blame this yeah. person. But that's just that's my opinion. That could yeah, be. I mean that, yeah. that's. I'm not and, saying and I'm he, right. I'm just saying there you can build a good culture, uh, but it you got to run things with an iron hammer once in a while. No, that's true, and he does have separate rooms like that only he can post. There's like a trade ideas room only he can post in. Then he has a couple moderators that can post um, instructional videos or like little webinar videos that no one else can post in. And then there's the open chat that anyone can talk in, but there's so many people. Um, it's not policed very well. And when I came to IC, um, I, part of the thing I loved about, like, in your um, intro video before you sign up just on the website of what can you can expect, I was like, man, like, there's rooms where all, all you see is alerts. That's so cool. I hate having to filter through this other chat room and see, is this person legit? Is that person legit? Like, okay, there's one alert. Now there's 10 people praying Hail Marys and, and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, Doing all sorts for, of Gregorian for, chants and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All this. Do you guys think this is going to do this? Uh, kind of. Yeah. There's some people like look at the chart or take a course, because if you have to ask that, you have no business putting money down. So that's cool. But so this, anyway, so coming back to IC, I was like, man, that is awesome. I like how structured this is. But then upon joining, 
I got a little intimidated. I was like, okay, I read the rules. I don't want to break the rules. <laughs> I want to, I want everyone to, I don't want to be the idiot. So, um, it was a little intimidating and, uh, I got called out once for mentioning something about CTU material in the IC chat room. And, um, it was, a, it was a firm, but, um, but polite like reminder. And I was like, Ooh, ooh, ooh. so I like reread the rules again. Uh, so it was a little intimidating at first. Was, was but, it um, me or somebody else? I really appreciate it. No, I think, I think it was Hooch. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was going to say um, if, Canadian if, iron if, fist. If, yeah. If it was me, I, <laughs> As, I sorry, sorry, <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry, but you're not going to be allowed to do that. Yeah. All right. <laughs> um, okay. So let's, this is all good stuff, but I mean, you were intimidated, but let me ask you this. So, but it's not like you ran away uh, with your tails between your leg or anything like that. I mean, because some people, and I don't know, maybe that's just how we're wired as human beings, but what allowed you to kind of take that as what it was meant to take? It, you know, not as you're an idiot, never come back here, but just as a, hey, that's kind of, that's that's a rule break. Don't do it again, but you're still welcome here. I mean, why? how do you look at a situation like that and not get so, not get offended like other people seem to get? Um. I was like, well, I read the rules. I just forgot one of them because it's a long list of rules, as it should be. I mean, I appreciate the um, the benefit of that. But like, we're all human. Like, OK, I was like, oh, crap, I forgot a rule. Darn it. I hope Clay's not pissed. And I deleted I deleted my comment that mentioned the CTU material. Um, and I think I might have reworded it in a different, a more vague way that didn't ha it didn't. I changed the wording so that it didn't. Right, you said um, something the way that the, yeah, no, that makes sense. It was a more. I I asked it in a way as if I didn't know anything about how CTU explains it. Yeah, so you you rewarded it in a clever way that didn't give anything away. No, that that makes sense. So I guess yeah. you were because at that point you're going through CTU and everything, but. Um, Let's kind of go back to where you're at now, looking up at the time, and we still got a, a while, but I want to... Sure. So you're, uh, where are you at exactly in the courses? You've done, it sounds like, robotic trading <clears throat> and skill sharpening so far? I am like halfway through the Context of Risk um, video in the Level 2 series. Okay. And have you ever traded or have you ever even looked at penny stocks at all? Um. I kind of looked at them a little bit while I was following those two people who we named okay. earlier. Um, well, I guess three people, but um, there just seemed a lot of, I kind of, I was kind of like, I was interested because I did see that there were people making a lot of money, but at the same time, I was also skeptical of, of that whole thing. So, um, I never really got like, I need to do penny stocks. I just like, oh, that's something people make money at doing. But if people are making a lot of money, make it sound so easy. Chances are there's, there's more that a goes lot into of risk it. <laughs> or there's or this is some sort of scam. Or I was a little I didn't know what it was, but I was like, ah, no, I don't know. Well, there's plenty of people that make money. I'll give them that. But there's also plenty of people that lose lots of money and they never post about the losses. So there's some. uh perceptions that can be created cleverly if you know what you're doing um, because yeah you can you, can, you can't sit here and say that penny stocks you can't make money but making money hand over fist over hand over fist it's like okay that's <laughs> true but there's also situations where yeah you you took a fist to the face but yeah I mean that's definitely kind of and I guess I asked that because you were in the level two and sometimes that pertains protect you know a little bit more to the penny stock world but it also does have a uh, you know, a, a big board uh, effect too. And so you haven't, you haven't gotten into the RVR trading. Uh, okay. Not, not yet. yet. No, I was, um, I was hammering out robotic trading really quickly. And then um, I think the holidays came by. So that kind of slowed me down a little bit. And then I do have a tendency to like obsess and like a lot of people have done, just like watch, try to take in too much information at once and not absorb a lot of it. So I said, you know what, I'm going to slow down just a little bit. And then I went a little too far away. I didn't watch videos for like a couple days and then I'd watch one and then miss a day or two. And so now I'm back in I, where I feel is a good middle ground. So I sl I had to back myself off a little bit because all I would think about going to sleep, waking up was trading and charts. And, and I was like, okay, I need to, 
and I'm going to burn myself out. That's what happens to me. If I overdo it for too long, I burn myself out on something. And I was like, I wish I would have learned this years ago. I don't need to burn myself up now to where I, I'm just like sick of it. So I slowed, I backed off just a little bit. Um, so now I'm, I'm just cruising along through, uh, level two. That's funny. You said you're, you stepped away for a little bit and you realize that I'm thinking, oh man, was he away for like a few weeks or something? And I didn't watch videos for like two days. Oh, whoa, Justin. <laughs> I thought he was going to say two <laughs> months. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Slow down, Justin. Um, good stuff. Now, Mike, you, after you get through um, RVR trading or I guess kind of, what is your necessarily game plan? I mean, I would definitely say you're on the right track and making sure that you get through RVR so that you know how to structure a proper trade plan. Mm -hmm. But after you get through that, um, are you going to make any changes compared to what you're doing now? Or I guess kind of how do you see the next you know few months shaping up for you uh, in terms of your plan of attack of how you're going to approach uh, you know getting involved and getting yourself to the point of, of going into live money? Because a lot of people, a lot of listeners very well may be in your shoes, not necessarily going through a structured educational process, but kind of wondering, yeah, how exactly do I tackle this whole process of going from not really knowing much to learning and then still determining when I should actually transition to real money. So, I mean, what is, what is you know, it, I'm not saying it's got to be perfect or anything like that, but just kind of how, how does that vision look for you, for you at this point? Uh, so my current mentality and kind of like what you just said, but I want to preface it with my plan will probably change um, as I learn a little bit, as I progress and finish our VR. And um, I think after that comes shorting, the shorting course. Um, but whatever order, I have it written down. Yeah, uh, RVR, shorting for profit. Then I'll do trampoline, volcano, both options. Um, uh, courses, I don't really, I don't think I'm going to take the um, penny stock course unless I get bored one day and be like, oh, let me just see what's going on in there. But um, I want to do those. After RVR, um, my plan is going to be to start actually doing paper trading on the TOS platform and like progressing from where right now I'm just setting alerts with notes. Um, once I have RVR under my belt and I have a little bit of a better idea of how to formulate a trading plan, I'd like to actually then step up a notch and put in um, orders with stop losses and uh, targets and maybe scale outs or whatever. Um, just on probably just on swing trades. Uh, I would also like to, at whatever point, I want to try everything to sort of fit my style or mesh my own style. So I'd like to um, learn more and and at least learn how to trade like you do. I've watched any of your live, your scalping live trade videos, and but I think where from what I understand and the way I've heard Ches talk in previous podcasts about swing trading options is for my personality and the lifestyle that I want to live is that sounds like, and also with my risk, I'm pretty risk adverse. And I feel like, especially just like I said, the way Ches has always explained his system, um, that seems like the direction that I would like to end up at. But I want to have a good um, holistic, at least experience with scalping. Like if I want to get on in day trade a little bit, I'd like to at least um, be capable to try it um or do it if i have to or just swing trade the underlying um but long term to me from what i understand currently and how i know what i want to do with with myself um is i th i think swing trading uh options would be the way i guess hooch and and ches do it sounds like the direction i want to go definitely so if, if i could give you one um suggestion here in terms of your course order is after you finish rvr i would mm -hmm. jump straight into the options courses personally um the, the, okay. the shorting and all the those strategies that are taught um are definitely helpful and i still absolutely recommend you go through them but the thing is that once you go through the rvr class and then at least the first options class then you can start sprinkling in the webinars so have you have you watched any of the live webinars yet or no uh, I have not. I knew that question was going to come. And um, I don't know if it's a good reason or not, but in my head, I wanted to focus on getting my education down. So even I missed, I've missed a lot of the women just being out or working late or something. And I haven't watched the replays. 
um, in my brain, I wanted to get through at least RVR absolutely before attending. I felt like that would be more beneficial. I wouldn't so much wouldn't go over my head. Yeah, and 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 that actually coincides perfectly with why I'm suggesting this is because I know for a fact that RVR to me is one of the most important, if not the most important course that's offered here. Um, at the same time, okay. though, since you since you'll want to start practicing after you kind of go through that course and as you're learning about options and whatnot, most of the webinars strictly focus on spotting and planning and kind of, you know, managing RVR type trades. So that, that's the only reason why I make that suggestion. Um, and then obviously, the only reason why I push the options classes up further in the order before the shorting or trampoline or volcano is because once you have a, a concept of how options work, uh, this gives you options in terms of, haha, it gives you options um, huh. in terms of the size Funny. account you want to use. Uh, if, you, if you're going to be starting with a smaller account, or if you're going to be over $25,000, um, and, okay. and by no means am I discouraging you practicing learning how to scalp because there's definitely webinars that do that too. Uh, just realize that uh, that is a very, very, it, 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 I would say it's much more advanced in terms of uh, what it takes to kind of do. But anyways, those are all covered in the webinars. I just want to suggest that because I think you'll really benefit from the webinars, mostly because you're listening to Clay and the room suggests how to kind of set up a trade plan. So after RVR, though, I, you're, you're on the right so path saying, and your patience is great. I do want to... So you're saying RVR... No, no, no. Go, no, ahead. go ahead, Chunky. Uh, I just wanted to confirm. You said RVR, then get into webinars, want the, and then jump, skip, trampoline, volcano, go straight to at least the option simplified after RVR. Yeah, and, and the thing about the webinars is you can you could start the options course, say the first options trading simplified, and sprinkle in a webinar here and there. Go through a couple modules, sprinkle in a, a webinar. That to me, it just breaks up the monotony of say learning about something specifically. The webinars are okay. mainly going to help you building and setting up and kind of. You'll hear Clay argue with people in the webinars, which is awesome because he's trying to explain why something is either why he personally is a good idea or a bad idea. So. Considering okay. that you're gonna, most of your trading in your entire life will be RVR based, um, it, it's a good thing to sprinkle in. I'm not saying you need to watch all 215 or whatever <laughs> we have now, but um, just working your way backwards or forwards are probably pretty beneficial. And then Clay, I don't know what you no, want. No, I'm going to just. And Chez is not wrong. I want to preface this with that. But in, in my mind, it's after RVR, you should do the shorting course uh, because part of options is well, you can make money in options when prices go down. So, but if, if you okay. know, if, talking about, that's puts. a good point. So if you, yeah, exactly. So if you know kind of setups for when a price may go down, then, you know, you, that'll make more sense for when you get to options courses. But to Chez's point, you can still go through, uh, you could go through the options and you would know, okay, well, I, I am going to need to identify more. So when prices go down, so I can use this portion of things. So you could always follow that up with shorting. So there's no right or wrong answer. It's just kind of, kind of how you want to tackle it and what you think would be, you know, the, the best for you. So, but our, or the shorting course definitely, I would say needs to be in the conversation, especially because as other people have said, and I know I've admitted, I never intended it this way. A lot of people say the shorting course really helped them out from the long side with the way I kind of go through it. Um, it, it just has helped them from a, a long sided trader too. So I would say throw that into the mix somewhere. Um, but um, like I said, there's no right or wrong, but I, you know, that's kind of my two cents on it. Does that, but we definitely no, agree though. Those both the, sound yeah, like the webinars. Advice. I mean, you're more than welcome to, a co to come, but there's, there's always an opening part where I always say, now, if you don't know what's going on, don't be discouraged. Cause I know some people are brand new and they hop in and it, I know they're just going to be overwhelmed because you know, they're there to complement the courses. Um, but so Chez is dead on there. You're not missing out on anything, you know, at the stage of the journey you're in, but, um, yeah, so that that's kind of the way I would approach it. And for any other members out there, yeah, something for you to consider too in order, which is why I like having Justin on because he's at a stage where a lot of you may be at the same stage. So hopefully these kind of conversations can can help you out here. So you want to do, um, I guess, I kind of want to go way, way back, but you had mentioned seeing numbers, you don't want them to kind of freak you out. So you've just been writing everything down. Um, do you plan on kind of looking at numbers after you get through these courses that we've just talked about? As far as like actually putting paper yeah, trades Yeah, I, I can't remember exactly platform. how you, you phrase it, but you made something, you made a comment about you don't want to actually see numbers play out because that might uh, kind of make your, 
Yeah, so I don't want to look at my PL okay. as that, so my question would be say down ten percent and but that doesn't count because I wasn't fully educated when I So started. my question would be when you do get quote unquote fully educated and like I said, go through the courses, are you then gonna to start to look at your PL then at that point? Definitely. Yeah, I'll I'll like I said, I'll upgrade from like right now I'm just doing setting alerts with notes as to like, okay, this alert signifies where I think I would want to buy. And if it, if this alert triggers before the alert at this price, I'd get stopped out. But if it goes to like my third alert, okay, wow, that would have been my, um, that would kind of, it's kind of like, to me, it's sort of like paper trading without seeing, um, P and L percentages to mess with my head and discourage me from continuing because I'm really just trying to get familiar with the platform, get familiar with, okay, I'm reading this pattern correctly and projecting with my best guess at what, as far as I know now. I just don't want to see a negative 30% P&L when I'm really only, you know, batting with a t-ball bat. Yeah, you're, you're, you're still very, very much in the planning and kind of moving forward phase. But obviously, you said you've already gone through robotic trading, right? Mm -hmm. So you've gone through the indicators. Are there any particular indicators specifically that you find valuable when you're doing your kind of technical analysis? Because a lot of people will yeah. lean towards certain ones over other ones. And I tried this, I took this off. So, so what particular do you think you're going to personally use on your trading charts? So the way I'm looking at indicators now is a little bit like uh, wheels on a bike. And I've got the two king indicators of price action and volume. And a lot, usually when I look at the newsletter, um, I turn all my indicators off. Maybe I'll put a moving average on, um, or something like a, a 50 and a 200. Uh, but I try to just look at the price action volume, just like that, that looks and make my own notes. I set some alerts. I'll put what clay is suggesting is going to happen. And then maybe I'll make a note, um, like based on what I see, like, you know, maybe this, maybe that kind of thing. Just putting my own thoughts in there so I could see how it plays out and think, oh, wow, I was on the right track or, wow, okay, I, I'm, what did I miss? And then maybe I'll relook at the the newsletter and say, oh, okay, you know, I missed this or missed that. But um, right now I've, I'm experimenting with like a lot of extra training wheels. And um, I know there's, everyone searches for the holy grail of indicators. And I did that for, I still kind of play, I still play with it to see what's going to help me the most. But I was going to mention earlier, and then we got on another topic, that I was so focused on indicators until going through robotic trading and especially skill sharpening that now uh, candlesticks and patterns um, and volume, one of my weaknesses is I, I often overlook volume uh, silly. So I'm trying to put in my notes and my alerts like, this is my thought, but check volume. Uh, and I, th I think what I'm doing, actually, I'm going to overlay the volume um, onto the, the chart itself so like I can't miss it as easily. Sure. Um, so, but right now what I've kind of got set up, and if I were to say, if you were to say, Justin, if you, if you were going to suggest a holy grail of indicators for you, um, and I've really only back tested it because I don't even want to get into like the paper trading thing. But what I kind of do is if it's going with the trend, I've got a, um, a Bollinger Band set up with a, um, on an eight period Bollinger Band. And so if we're going, so just say it's in an, a, a bull river, um, when, that, uh, when the, the candlesticks leave the lower Bollinger Band, that's like my first sort of indicator. And then I wait for, um, across a combination it doesn't necessarily matter what order across of the stock rsi uh set at 14 3 and 3 um and then across of if i want to be aggressive you could do a a macd with um 4 15 and 8 and if you want to be if i'm going to be like conservative or wait it'll be a macd of 8 31 and 12 i know that this is um searching for the holy grail but that was i prefaced that and it within like if you're using the the aggressive the faster macd um the signals have the the rsi and macd signals have to come within three bars of each other and 
a lot of times I've found that now there there needs to be volume factored in um, and patterns and all that. But I've found like if I was going to trade based just on indicators, um, there's a lot of big moves that that would have signaled as long as you're going with the trend and there's volume. Now, I like what you're saying. I think you'll soon find out that maybe you're overdoing it a bit, but why I <laughs> will defend you and um, and I'm glad you kind of realize you're searching for the Holy Grail, but at least you're thinking, at least you're trying to put together trade plans. Like I said, I think you'll realize that a lot of this will change, but this is so much better than you hopping on here and saying, well, you know, I read something on stock twits and some guy said this was going to the moon. So that was why I bought. It's like, <laughs> oh, that, yep, trading is that easy. Or, you know, I paid That's for good. some <laughs> alert service and some guy told me to buy here. So because I paid him, he must know what he's talking about. So I bought there. So yeah, you're, you, like I said, I, I think we'll, some will change, but good for you. At least you're approaching this in a, a methodical way, a structured way, where you're trying to put yourself together some sort of system and your system isn't some random dart throw, some random degenerate gambling approach that I know you have witnessed, that Ches and I certainly witness. Um, so I, I will uh, applaud you there uh, because you could certainly be going about all this in a much more unorganized manner. Um, so and go it, ahead. It, it definitely, I appreciate that. Thank you for um, understanding where I'm coming from. And like I said, it's I've like added a lot of wheels to the bike and it's not efficient uh, to ride a motorcycle with six wheels. Um, so I'd like to get down to, you know, not necessarily two wheels of just price action and volume, um, but, you know, just add a couple small training wheels like some moving averages and maybe just, you know, one MACD and, you know, whatever. But I want to I do intend to pare it down. Um, like you said, I'm just trying to figure out what works and and figure out which are the weakest links or or what new um, insight I'll have to uh, price action and volume that'll eliminate the need. Just be too redundant to have something else pulled up and make it crazy. That is true, but I I, w I would rather have you ride an eight wheel motorcycle compared to riding a one wheel motorcycle with your blindfold on while you're trying to juggle flaming <laughs> chainsaws because some guy on YouTube said, hey, look at me. This is how easy it is. And, that, and that's what you started to do out of the gates. And like I said, a lot will. Maybe I should start a maybe I should start a YouTube channel and alert service with um, with my spider web of a million indicators. And, and you get know people what? To pay me hey, five thousand dollars. That'll, impre month. They, they that'll would. impress people. You, if you use all these indicators and after you describe that, you know, like I was, like I said, I, I think a lot will change. But all I could think was, hey, you know what? The, uh, he's got a plan, but I, I guarantee you, you there would be someone out there like, whoa, he's got an aggressive attack and he's got this. Man, I would pay him to tell me when to buy and sell. Trust me, listeners, <laughs> that's a little too easy. To, you know, if it sounds too good to be true that you can just pay somebody, then why, aren't, why isn't everybody doing it? But um, yeah, no, you're on the right track. And knowing that we have more context here about where, where you are exactly in your journey with what courses you have and have not taken, um, it makes sense why you're doing what you're doing. But you're 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 certainly uh, attacking all this in a very logical manner, and it's uh, by no means random. Um, as to your own credit, like you said, you know things will change, um, and I you know I, I think they will too. But you're certainly on a structured pathway, and that's what we want. But uh, Ches, I, I think this may be the most cost-effective shipping price you'll ever have for your time machine because you guys are both neighbors <laughs> essentially. So I I mean. You could probably, it. He's he's driving down the forty, and he's yeah, he can I was, just use it over I was here. I going to say, house. yeah, just hook it to the dog sled. With you guys got snow right now, I'd assume. So is this dog sled analogy? Or, <laughs> yeah, okay, good. But uh, yeah, Chaz, yeah, yeah, you'll get you'll deliver. Or he's coming to you to get the time machine, so you're up. But yeah, if you were, if you can come on over, come on down the road, and you want to borrow the time machine, give yourself one piece of advice. What would that advice be? Uh. I'm I'm not much for changing anything because of you learn and everything I think happens at the right time and place, um, but somehow I would have I wish I would have I would tell myself to take it more seriously sooner when I was younger because I I could be eight years into trading by now if I had um, sat down and learned from my mentor um, and and or found uh, CTU sooner and that's not a plug this isn't pre rehearsed but. Uh, it's structured so well, especially compared to other 
things I've tried um, that I would have I would definitely have joined uh, years and years and years ago. Okay, we'll put your check in the mail. Okay, when this is over, Ches will Ches will deliver it down. That was that was well said. You read that. <laughs> I'm still waiting on those yeah, mind yeah. shares. You read that script perfectly. <laughs> that was a perfect execution of the script there, Justin. But no, thank you very much. And, uh, it Nate yeah. sent it. Well, <laughs> but thank yeah. you very. I'm glad that you find it valuable and. Uh, you know, that always gives me a little bit of boost that, yeah, keep on going, Clay, because, um, you know, from some people, it's like, well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy, but they don't have any other baselines. But somebody like you, you have a lot of baselines because you, you, you've experimented with a lot of other people's stuff. And uh, so good. I'm glad that you find a lot of value in it. Now, now it's time to get serious. The first serious question, what is your favorite movie? Number one favorite movie would be Fight Club. So I guess we have to stop talking about it right now then as your favorite movie. That's Talk where we what? go. Exactly. That's right. Next question. See, Next it. question. He's in the club. <laughs> favorite. I do. Go ahead. I do have to, I do have to, uh, um, I do have to have a dumb and dumber quote though that I want to oh, see if you can follow. You th- I am unstumpable. <laughs> go. You are in luck. There's a town two miles that way. Okay, so that's at the end, pretty much after the credit or right before the credits. But you, do you need to follow? No, a I, but I don't know what, what's the quote. <laughs> oh. I know they're telling. I know they're oh, telling so the, the bikini the, bus where to go. But I don't. That that is. You just gave me the yeah. quote, right? Or am I supposed to? Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought you were gonna like say the next like. What is it? Line. Maybe you stumped me. I thought the next line was. Oh. <laughs> you stumped him. You in? So they. Uh, the the v- bus drives away. Oh the oh yeah then carry. oh yeah the bus drives away and they go man yeah. two guys are gonna get to drive around with <laughs> those girls for the next two weeks. <laughs> Don't worry Harry, our break will yeah. come sometime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> soon. There's a, well there's a line in the middle where he says, "Do you realize what you've done?" And you're thinking, "Oh good, he caught." Oh on. yeah yeah yeah. They yeah. Chase Was the that in between down. there? <laughs> Yeah, he goes. You'll have to. He's excuse a little my slow. Friend. He's the a little town slow. Is back that way. The town is yeah, that nothing. way. Yes, okay, yeah, there yeah. you go. And then he goes. Two lucky guys yeah. are going to run around months, with them for yeah. two months. Nope. <laughs> no, that's that's a good. Yeah, that is a good quote. And I'll give partial partial stumpage there. But yeah, that was. Uh, do you realize what you've done, <laughs> God? And then, uh, yeah, no, that's. So you're a dumb and dumber fan. Give me another one. It's Give me another so one. I feel like. Yeah. Are, are those skis yours? Both of them. Yeah. Both yeah. of them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the gloves one always gets me too. You've had yeah. two pairs of gloves? Yeah. We're in the Rockies. The Rockies? I'm going to kill you. <laughs> Harry, you're getting that look in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I love it. I, I love it. Oddly enough, that movie was on, I don't even know what the Paramount channel is. It's some new channel that I don't maybe, but I don't, was on a couple of nights ago and, uh, the uh the ski part was on so that was uh <laughs> that's one of the just give me your number real quick i have a really great memory it's five <laughs> one Man. isn't that weird how sometimes for god's sake just give me the number <laughs> and his eyes go crossed oh Liv- man all right we gotta stop living in this, a ski uh, this town is- living in a ski town that that the, those scenes are, are oh yeah yeah right. i finally visited by the way, which is kind of random, but you totally missed the boat on joining the community when we, because we did the the meetup, or I was out there in, when was the Denver meetup, Chez? You, that was May. Uh, at a warmer time end of May. than this. Yeah, yeah, end of May, we did a, the, the Denver <laughs> meetup, and then I went back out there in October. So yeah, I guess if you joined in this, yeah, you just missed us. So I mean, you would have probably... I well, did. I, I I definitely plan on getting back out there, but uh, yeah, we'll have to hang out in Denver. But yeah, I, I visited uh, where the hotel was. I can't think of the name. Estate, Estates Park, Estes, Estes Park. Park. Yeah. So uh, I finally got to get, go. get some pictures there. But all right, we got to move on to the next question. We, I don't know. If people are still listening now. They're probably <laughs> like hardcore like listeners because they're just putting up with our shenanigans here. So <laughs> I appreciate it. But Chaz, you're up. <laughs> Favorite food and dessert. Uh, I love a good Indian curry with garlic naan, um, but I'll don't, not turn down New York pizza, love hot wings and tacos. And if I'm really going to treat myself, I will buy a nice thick ribeye and do a reverse sear on it. That is the best. I mean, that just, I need to, I need, I need the reverse sear. Yeah. Explain to me. I'm, I'm a cooking noob. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can Google it, but, um, basically you, you 
take a thick cut of meat, you put it on a, a rack over a pan in the oven, a, or yeah, pan. Um, you bake it at 275 until the internal temperature is like, one, if you like a medium rare steak, so the internal temperature is like 125. Uh, then you pull it out, wrap it in foil for like 10 minutes and get a skillet or a grill works too, but I like a cast iron skillet. Get it smoking hot and then you just, you sear each side for about a minute and it is mm. the juiciest, most flavorful steak you'll ever eat. Well, we just bought some steaks, so I might have to give that a whirl for one of those. And yeah. uh, it's got to be thick, back. though. Yeah, it's, it's a decent. It's got to be thick. <laughs> all right, there you Chef's go. Probably You're rust- all set. He should probably wrestle down that bull or elk or whatever it was with his bare hands. He's really become a mountain man. Uh, <laughs> don't let him be intimidate you when you meet him in person. He'll, uh, as my wife says, he looks di- she he looks different every time he uh, she sees him. So I don't know what he he's probably like. I'm a chameleon. He's probably like six five now, full beard. You know, I, I have no idea. <laughs> Six five. He's I'm, than I'm a minor in a lumberjack <laughs> yeah. now, Clay. Yeah. If you didn't know, yeah. I would not. I don't know. Maybe you're a blacksmith now, like uh, Justin. But Justin, final question: three words. What would those three words be that you would use to describe, you know, what what you believe it takes to be a successful trader, or what you would associate with successful trading? I think it starts with humility um, to get educated and accept uh, that it's going to be a a pa- possibly a painful learning experience. Um, uh, patience, education, and uh, determination. That's a fourth word, but I think humility for me is kind of the key. Humility and patience. I like it. I like it. Uh, a slice of humble pie can go a long way. So I'm, I'm all yeah. with you. I didn't finish. Sorry. I didn't finish Chez's question though. Uh, for dessert, I also like a, a German chocolate cake. It steals my heart. Those are pretty good. Huh. I, I hate ending the podcast on this because I always end up hungry, even if it's only 10 o'clock in the morning for me. But yeah, all right. <laughs> no, no, those those are good answers. I'm glad you finished that out. Well, we're Chunky Monkey, Justin, whatever you, we're calling you, I don't know. But thank you for taking time out of uh, your morning, knowing that you're a couple hours behind me. But I, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, we'll definitely have to have you back on the, the show at some point. I hear how your journey continues. And um, yeah, just keep on going. I, I didn't hear any red flags, you're, you're doing what you should be doing and sure some things may change, but overall I'll say, keep on chugging, man. You're, you're doing a good job, but uh, thank you very much for hanging out. Yeah. Thank you. And thanks, uh, Chez, IT Nate and all the previous guests that, uh, I've listened to cause I've learned a lot and written down a lot of notes of things to look for, um, and things to try. And, and, uh, the guys in the chat are all super helpful and, um, I just appreciate the whole the whole community. To awesome, be honest. awesome, and uh, and you and are a part. You are now a part of it, and I'm uh, I'm very confident you'll be another good building block and asset to it. Um, and I'll turn that into a quick plug. See if you're if you're kind of on the fence about volunteering to come on. You do it. Does this does help people? And you know, Justin is thanking previous guests, and you know, if you're a fan and you want to kind of just chime in, I, I assure you that. No matter where you are in your journey, there's something that we can learn from you and there's something that you can share that other people can gather from it. So don't be one of these people where your excuse is, well, I don't have anything good to talk about. I assure you, Chez and I, we're, we're getting pretty decent at this, given this is episode 200, whatever. Um, we'll, we'll find something um, in, in your journey or story um, that others can uh, benefit from. So before we all go, though, if you're still listening, first off, bless your heart for uh, getting through my terrible Dumb and Dumber impressions. But if you are still with us, then for sure, you got to do at least some of this. First, if you're on listening to this on the YouTube channel, check out the channel as a whole. There's live trade videos. There's vlogs. There's lots of other variety other than just these podcasts. So hopefully you decide to ultimately to subscribe. If you are listening on iTunes or any of the other podcast players, then subscribe. And especially on iTunes, if you could leave us a rating, that would really go a long way and we would appreciate it. And finally, if you're listening at claytrader.com on the show notes page, leave us a comment in the little area down below the the thumbnail. We will reply and hit that share button. Again, things like that go a long way. So thank you again to Justin. Thank you again to our steam co-host, Chez. And thank thank you to you as listeners. We will see you back next week. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com.